Today I'd like to talk about sound sampling and very basic sound processing on an Arduino. When looking for sound reactor displays online on YouTube, I'll typically see displays with flashing LEDs where they're all the same color, changing color, or yet another MSG EQ7 based view meter. MSG EQ7 being a uh, frequency based uh, chip. In fact, you don't need an MSG EQ7 or some fancy fast Fourier transform library in order to create some pretty cool effects uh, with LEDs. This video discusses some basic sampling, filtering, and averaging that you can use to create your own sound reactive displays. For this video, I'm going to be breaking it down into several different sections. First off, I'm not going to be including any actual LED manipulation in the video. We're just going to be talking about the sound. So first off, I'm going to be going through uh, just centering of the uh, data that you've got that you're sampling. I will then go on through uh, adding squelch control, then a really lousy peak detection capability, followed by uh, automatic gain control, because sometimes the sound can be too quiet for your LEDs or for your LED uh, program, or the sound can be too loud. So the automatic gain control is a way to increase or decrease the uh, level of sound sampled in order to match whatever you'd like to uh, program on your LEDs. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using a SparkFun um, ADMP 401 microphone. It has a gain of 67 dBs, which uh, they, they say it more than meets the bandwidth requirements of the microphone. That's built into it. And uh, let's have a look at this uh, microphone in a little bit more detail. What I would do is uh, I would uh, connect this microphone to VCC, connects to 3.3 volts. I'm using an Arduino Nano. So connect the VCC to 3.3 volts, ground to ground. And the audio port, I'll connect that to uh, pin five on my Arduino. The other thing I need to do is also connect the 3.3 volt line on the Arduino Nano to the AREF pin on the Ar Arduino Nano as well too, and I will talk about that in the video in a little bit. Here's the first uh, file that I am using on my Arduino, and when sampling uh, sound or other signals on the Arduino Nano, uh, each analog pin has uh, a 10-bit A to D converter, so values can range anywhere from 0 to 1023. So when I am sampling a sound, what I'm looking to do is to center it out to find out where it is when it's the most quiet. And through trial and error, I've determined that a value of about 510 is about when the sound is relatively quiet. So let's have a look at see what the oscilloscope output is on the Arduino. So once I have sampled the sound and subtracted that, uh, that 510 offset, when it's quiet in the room, it centers around zero. So the sampled sound minus 510 gives us a uh, nice quiet range of uh, zero. So we're, we're pretty centered there. The other thing I've done with, these, uh, with the output here is I have... Um, uh, put on a, a little bit of extra printing lines when I'm outputting to the uh, serial plotter on the Ar on the Arduino IDE because the IDE will auto uh, scale the output and sometimes I just like to be able to see it without the auto auto scaling so if we have a look here where is that uh, gone there it is so I've 20 up top, minus 20 below, and any time the uh, signal goes beyond that range, then it will do the auto scaling, but otherwise it stays within the range. So you'll see on several of my sketches where when I'm printing out the uh, outputs, I will also provide some auto uh, uh, 
some value, fixed value, so that I can avoid the auto scaling. So here, what we're doing is we've got the microphone pin on on A5 on the Nano. I've I've uh, predetermined my DC offset to 510. I've also set up an analog reference external, and we talked about that a little bit earlier with the hardware. When you're connecting a 3.3 volt microphone to a 5 volt Arduino, you need to add this line here. So what we'll do is we'll have a look and see what happens if I don't use that line. So if I comment that out and recompile the program, we'll now have another look at the serial monitor and although the volume does increase I don't get anywhere near a nice clean quiet area in the Arduino so so it really is important to understand your uh, uh, what the output of your microphone is and make sure everything is all hooked up and configured correctly so Obviously, I need to add that here so that we will have a uh, have good output values. The other thing I want to talk about is um, let's see, is checking out your own microphone to make sure that when you are uh, hooking up a microphone and and measuring it, that it does something similar. When it's quiet. You've got low signals. In this case, it goes from 7 to minus 7 or thereabouts. And when you're talking or making a lot of noise, that the values uh, increase significantly. If your microphone doesn't do that, then I think it's time for another microphone. So, for instance, there are sound sensors out there which you can fine-tune. And every time it senses something, it will just create a major spike but it's not going to give you sound levels or anything like that. So those sound sensors are really uh, quite a bit of uh, a waste of time for, for, for what I'm trying to do here at least. So just reviewing for this first uh, sketch, I've defined analog pin five as a microphone pin. I've predefined the DC offset, the, or essentially when everything is quiet, this is about zero for the microphone. Uh, define the, the serial output, the analog reference for the 3.3 volt microphone. I've written a little uh, uh, routine here to, to sample the microphone. So I'm analog reading the microphone. I'm subtracting the DC offset. So everything is now centered around zero. I'm printing it out and then just overriding the auto scaling uh, uh, components of the Arduino uh, serial plotter. For the second program, what I'd like to do is get rid of that uh, DC offset uh, uh, predetermined value and see if we can automatically calculate it. So what I'm going to do is take uh, 32 samples, uh, put them into a for loop, and then come up with a, a calculate an average value. So in this particular case, I'm going to be adding the 10-bit uh, microphone in um, value. And since that goes up to 1,023, if I take 32 samples, the value can will max out at uh, 32,000. So in this case, what I'm going to be doing is defining a 16-bit um, a, uh, a unsigned integer so I know that the data is going to stay in range and is going to wrap around zero or anything like that. So I'm going to add that up and then divide it by the number of samples. So a pretty simple routine. And let's see what we get out of that. So in this uh, routine that we've got here, I've put in 540 and minus 480 so that we have a fixed uh, a range. And then I have a line going through 510. And this is the average that's calculated. And we notice that within a, within a few uh, uh, a few values, it's going to be pretty well centering around 510. So we can smooth that out if we like, or just take a fixed value. But that's that's what we've got here. So um, so that's one way to calculate the average. One I don't really like the using a for loop too much because uh, when I'm concerned, I like to be able to 
run through a routine really quickly, not use for loops or delay statements. So anytime I see something like that, I'm thinking to myself, how can we make this faster? So this is just one method that you can use to uh, center your, uh, your data. Another method of calculating the center of your data is to use a, uh, a running total um, in combination with a, uh, uh, an array. So you keep the, main, the values in your array and you can also, in this case, we're going to add to a sample the microphone in, uh, remove the uh, last element of the array, uh, come up with your average, and then uh, put the new value into your array, increase the sample count, and then continuously cycle through. And if we have a look at the how that results, again, that centers around 510. So that's another way that still uses um, uh, so, uh, integer math in order to calculate your center, uh, but I think it's a little faster than the, uh, but more complicated than the for loop uh, arrangement. The method that I've ended up preferring to center my data is using a, a smoothing algorithm. So what we're going to be doing is sampling our data and then storing a, a value called uh, the MikeLev in this case. And we take the old value of MikeLev, multiply it by 31, and then add the microphone input divide by 32. So it basically it's a, it's a smoothing type of a routine. And if we look and see what we get here, again, it samples around or it averages around 510. And it's a nice simple little, uh, uh, little one liner that you can use to center out your data. Here's something interesting about this though. When I was initially programming this, I made a, uh, had a little bug in it and I had defined my MikeLev uh, large value as a long. And if we compile that as a long instead of a float, which it currently is, let's see what uh, happens to our uh, average. Grab that average, bring it over here. And rather than 510, which is where it should be, it's actually about 495. So we are almost about uh, 20 points off of where we should be with our average. And so really what happens here is that using integer mathematics on a cumulative uh, multiplication like we've got here, the when you're multiplying by or dividing by a, uh, an odd number, like one divided by two, with integer math will be a zero. So you're losing some of your accuracy. So as a result, when you are defining the, the types of data that you are using, you need to make sure that you really understand your data or you, will, or you may end up with uh, cumulative errors and not really sure why you've got that. So for instance, if you're using um, values that are somewhere between zero and 200, you obviously can't use a signed 8-bit uh, value or you're going to be rolling over. So it's important, really important to understand your data. Okay, once I've uh, sampled the data, averaged it out, found the center point, what I'll then do is to uh, take the sample data, subtract that, uh, that now center value and take the absolute value of that. So now I should have uh, samples that range from zero to whatever the volume is. And if we have a look at that uh, on the serial plotter, that's what we're gonna get. So nice background sound, followed by anything louder whenever we speak or make some other noise. So a uh, pretty simple thing to do. And again, understanding what the data is does it look right? So whenever I'm doing any sound reactive displays, I will make sure that I understand what the output of my microphone or sound sensor is.
The next thing I'd like to do is to filter out the background noise. So as we've seen earlier, when we have sound, there's always going to be some sound happening and that could show up in your LEDs when you really don't want it to. So when it's quiet out, I like the LEDs to just do nothing. So we'll determine a squelch value. So I manually come up with squelch values. I'm sure you could come up with a routine to, um, to automatically determine that like we've done with the centering, but I haven't really gone to that distance at all with my uh, software yet. So what I've, by looking at the sound values, I've determined that a volume of, of about seven is a good squelch so that uh, whenever I'm sampling the microphone, if the microphone value is less than seven, then I'm going to give the sample, out, resulting sample, a value of zero. Otherwise, the sample is going to be smoothed a little bit with the last sample, like we had with the previous uh, centering, and take the two samples, divide them by two, and come up with a slightly smooth uh, sample. So let's see see what that looks like with the um, with the serial plotter. So the blue line is the raw sample, whereas the red line is the um, uh, sample with the uh, with the squelch applied. So no sound, and you see that the sample is is zero when there's uh, only background noise happening. Okay, and let's just comment this line out for now and see what that looks like. So now we'll just be displaying the squelched uh, values. And when I talk, I've got some values here and they go up to about 100 or thereabouts. But when it's quiet here, there's no output. So I'm pretty happy with the squelching. Peak detection. That's a big topic. Some people can call it beat detection, whatever. Really what we're looking for is some form of a trigger when sound gets louder at a certain point of time, you get a, a trigger and which you can then use in your sound reactive display routines. Well, I've looked up lots of articles on it, some using fast Fourier transforms and other fancy methods. I just want to come up with something really ghetto that's going to give me some form of peak detection. It's not great, it's not even good, but it gives me some sort of a value. And what I'll do in my case is I'm going to go through what I've previously done, read the microphone, level out the sound uh, centered around zero. I will remove the squelch, take out the abs absolute value, remove the squelch. Then what I'm going to do is take that sample and I'm going to create an average of that sample. So every time I'm sampling something, I will be running it through this uh, what leveling routine to find out what the average, is, average volume is over a period of time. Then what I'm going to do is run, run it through this uh, ghetto peak detector and say, if whatever sample that I've got, and as we see here, my sample has been uh, level, leveled up just a little bit between the last two samples. So if my sample now is greater than the average plus some sort of a value, we call it max vol, and in this case, I'll say max vol is 11, so if my smoothed out sample is greater than the average plus the max vol, and it's been millis, uh, uh, 50 milliseconds since the last time we've had a sample, then I'm going to trigger a sample. So let's see what happens here. And like I said, this, this is really ghetto, but it half-assed works for me. So I'm not going to make any claims to how good it is, but it's absolutely better than nothing. So we're going to have a look at that. And we will uh, capture that at some point and see what it looks like. Okay, so we've got some sounds here and I'm, I'm going to screen capture that. 
So what we've got here is the red line has the average value, the blue is the current smoothed out samples, and the green is the peaks. So every time it sees the average or the sample is max fall greater than the average, it's going to do a peak. And again, it found one over here, 50 milliseconds later, and it's got several peaks, okay? And if we let that run again, bum, bum, bum. So you get a few peaks here and there. So it's not going to be, it's not going to be beat detection, but at least it's giving you some sort of a trigger. So in my case, what I do is I'll just say, if it sees a peak, or what it thinks is a peak, uh, make a, a Boolean value sample peak equals one. Then I will run a display routine. Once that routine is completed, it will reset that sample peak value, and then we can continue on again. So not very good, but is there's some basic calculations that you can perform there. One of the problems that I have when I'm sampling sounds and uh, applying these values to the LEDs is that in a very quiet room, the, the resultant sample or the sample average is going to be very low and it's very hard to make any effect on the LEDs. And conversely, when the sound in the room is really high, uh, the LEDs will always be turned on all the time. So what I like to come up with is some sort of a automatic gain control for this. So really, I'd be defining a set point, let's say a, I'm going to say a value of 60, such that I want the uh, resultant values to be around 60, depending on the uh, volume in the room. So what I've got here is a, a program called AGC Average, which will take all of the information that we've done before, have a peak detection, averaging, and all that sort of thing, keep those values. And then I've got a, another routine here called AGC Average, which is going to calculate a multiplier based on the set point such that the, um, uh, the, the resulting volume level, after it's been multiplied, will take on the value of sample average times your multiplier. So we now need to calculate what that multiplier is. So calculating our uh, automatic gain control multiplier. So I have determined up here a value of uh, 64 automatic gain control. So the sample average will be on the order of 20 or, or 60 or so, um, no matter what the actual sample average is. So that's going to be our, our, our set point, as it were. So if we go down to this routine here, we say, if our sample average is less than one, so a very quiet room, we're going to say, give it a value of the target AGC of 60. That's going to be our multiplier. So maximum value of 60. Otherwise, the uh, target AGC or the mul multiple plier is going to be the target AGC or 60 divided by our sample average. And as time goes on, will that will adjust. So it's not going to respond immediately to any given uh, sample, but it will be based on the average. So let's have a look and see what that looks like here. So there's our set point, and it'll go up to 60. And it will, depending on the, as the uh, average goes up, the multiplier will go down. And that happens really quickly. So that, that is, um, I found that to be pretty successful with some display routines that I've uh, used. And let's see what the resulting sample will is going to look like compared to the uh, original sample, the filtered sample. So let's have a look at that. Oh, we're going to get our sample out. That doesn't look right. Oh, no wonder. Oh, 
Okay, so now we've uh, got the samples in red and the AGC samples in blue. So now we've got some samples that are going to be a lot higher and um, a lot more um, uh, a lot more uh, power going to the LEDs. Now we know that some of these values go up to 240, and that's because the multiplier has not uh, uh, the sample has, has risen too quickly over the average and our multiplier has gone too high. So this is why we have this extra line on line 71 here to saying if it's greater than 255, let's just um, uh, max out the sample AGC value at 255 so we don't uh, overload our, our data. So again, understanding what the data puts out is really important, especially when we're going to be feeding that into our, our LEDs. So now we've got something that's uh, uh, and not too loud. So when it's really loud, it's it's not too loud. Uh, the LEDs aren't too busy, but when it's a little quieter, they still have uh, a reasonable gain. So so that's that's a poor man's automatic gain control. The last program I'd like to talk about is another automatic gain control, but this time we're going to be using a proportional integral uh, control loop uh, to do so. Uh, the last one we used was just direct proportional control where I'm taking the, the average and um, comparing that against a set point and calculating a sensitivity multiplier from that. This particular version uses not only the direct proportional difference, but also the integral of the difference and the integral being of a of a uh, sample would be, let's say, if you're making 1,000 samples over time, the integral of that is the sum of all of those, the sum value of all of those samples over that period of time. So when you put it in that context, the integrals are not really that hard to understand. In this case, I'm going to be taking uh, calculating an error. And the error is going to be similar to the last one where we're going to be subtracting our target from our target value, a uh, what's called the sample pi average. So the pre-calculated average um, of the uh, control loop. Now, right now it's a zero because we haven't done anything yet. So this is a bit of a, a cumulative or an iterative routine. So there's our direct proportional error. Now we're going to be on line 110, we're going to be calculating the integral error. So it's, and we also want to keep it from going out of control because it, I found in the mathematics that it will just go, keep on going up or out and, and go crazy. So we are taking our um, whatever start summation value and adding the error over time. So it's, a, the, um, it's the integral of the error over a period of time. And then we're going to be taking the sensitivity, multiplying it by a proportional constant, or multiplying the error by a, uh, a proportional constant, and getting a uh, integral constant, and multiplying it by our integral value with that start t thing. Uh, we're also going to be constraining any sensitivity values which uh, go into the loop. So just a little math here to keep things from going out of control. Also, the the sample, the calculated sample, making sure it doesn't go beyond beyond 255 like we did with the last program, and we're going to be calculating a, uh, a smoothing out an average value, and then returning that. So let's see if we can um, come up with our uh, some values here and see how they look like. So we're going to take our sample and our PI sample and see how that looks. Okay, so now we've got a sample, and the sample is in the blue, the PI sample is in red. So it, when you first get some, some sound, it's going to be at the maximum value. But then over time, la, it averages out to something a little smaller. So similar to the AGC average, this will uh, 
come up with some automatic gain control. I, in practice, I prefer the AGC average because it's simpler, comes up with reasonable results. Um, I think if I tuned this one a bit more, spent a whole bunch more time on it, I might end up preferring this method. But uh, I've already spent a couple of months just trying to figure out and getting it running, a couple of months part time that is, and I'm ready to cut my losses and just use the AGC average. But this is a much more advanced way of coming up with some automatic gate control if you uh, have the math chops in order to get it running real properly. So in conclusion with these uh, different routines, which I'll be putting on GitHub and, and uh, linking to with uh, my YouTube video, some of the important things to think about are making sure that your routines are fast. I have a, a, um, a repository on GitHub that gets down into assembly language on an Arduino Nano to sample at very high speeds, you want to have your routines fast. And in my case, I don't use uh, delays in my routines or any nested for loop. So everything should run as fast as you possibly can get it. Uh, the other thing I like to do is to um, look for routines that are good enough. So for instance, I'd sort of given up on the, uh, the proportional integral uh, uh, automatic gain control, my peak detection was pretty bad, but they half-assed work. So to me, it was good enough. More importantly, however, is to know your hardware, know how to hook it up, know what the data that you've got is coming out of it. So you know the, the smallest values and the largest values so that you don't overload. Or in the case of the longs for that um, cumulative averaging, make sure that you understand what happens when you do a bunch of uh, mathematics on your data? Will you start losing accuracy like I did uh, when I was using a long versus a float? So it's important to know your data, to know what you're doing with your data, and define your data variables uh, correctly.